by the way, this is all like from this one balance people. Um, so which of these is intellectual property? Let's see a show of hands. How many people say a novel is an example of intellectual property? Yes? Yeah. All right, how many say no? Not intellectual property. Oh, uh, what is intellectual? Uh, <laughs> see, hold on, hold on. Yeah, great. You're not the only one, but it's all a novel. <laughs> Just a novel in general. Just a novel in general. Can we talk about what an intellectual property is? Is there a dictionary? So what you're saying is that this activity is silly. Is there a Webster's Iceland? Is there a Webster's Here we go. The following items are intellectual property. Okay, so out of that big list, these are the ones that are intellectual property. So think about the word, the words intellectual property. It's something that you can own that isn't necessarily physical, okay? It's an idea, right? So in intellectual pro pro property, here's your definition that they want you to think about. Intellectual property is a work or invention that is the result of creativity, such as a manuscript design to which one has rights, okay? So it's something that's not necessarily tangible and to which you have the rights and you own that because you created that. Okay, so if we go back to this list for a minute, okay, a novel, somebody created that, right? So they own the creation of this. J.R.R. Tolkien, he wrote The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings series, therefore he owns it, okay? Now you might be thinking, but wait a second, he's dead, right? So he doesn't own it anymore. Ah, but his family, his, lay, his uh, estate now owns. So just because somebody dies doesn't necessarily mean that it's no longer owned by somebody. Okay? A house. Okay? A house cannot be considered intellectual property because it's actual property. Right? It's an actual physical property that somebody owns and pays for. Now, here's the difference though. If somebody designs this really cool, funky house, they can apply for a copyright so that they own the intellectual property of the design of the house, okay? But the house itself would not be the The design of the house would be. So Frank Lord Wright, this famous architect, has all these cool, funky designs, um, really neat houses. The houses themselves are not necessarily intellectual property, but the designs of them are. You can't recreate one of his houses. A song, somebody create that. A cell phone, a cell phone is property. You own that cell phone, right? However, there's a company that, that owns the rights to the design of the cell phone. So Apple has the rights to the design of the cell phone. And in fact, um, Google had to, uh, when they made their various Android devices and stuff, they actually had to kind of change and tweak things a little bit because it was too close and too similar to the iPhone. Because in the Apple people said, like, no, you can't make that phone. That's our phone. That's our design. I'm like, okay, we'll go back. We'll tweak a couple more things so it's more. It, it's not as much like your phone. Okay. So the designs. Where is my thing? Here it is. Um, there we go. Um, so the the phone itself, right? A cell phone app, the design of the app, would be considered intellectual property. Okay. A computer. The design of it can be, but not the actual thing. Right. Right. So we're going to get the idea. Now, a car is an interesting one. We had a debate about this one last class. Uh, because, um, you know, the design of a car can be intellectual property. Okay. But typically, a car can be intellectual property because it's just property. Right? I own a Toyota Tacoma. It's out there. Everybody owns a Toyota Tacoma, it seems. Right? It's no different than any other one. But if I somehow took that Tacoma and I changed it around and made it something completely different and new, Maybe that could be considered some form of intellectual property. But typically, a car is just a car, and you own the car. It's not really an intellectual thing. It's a, it's a car. Okay. Um, now, thinking about a movie, um, a DVD, the actual physical DVD itself is property. The content on the DVD, that is intellectual property. So the ideas that are on the um, are intellectual property. Okay. So again, intellectual property, it's a work or invention, a manuscript, a design, the result of somebody's creativity and thinking. Okay. 
So if I were to write a novel tonight, boy, that'd be a good trick, right? Um, I would own the intellectual properties to that novel, okay? Because I wrote it, it was my act. I could then go to the government and be like, hey government, I wanna own the rights to this, and they could give me like a fancy piece of paper or something that says, yeah, you have the copyrights for this, yay. Technically though, I would still own the intellectual properties for that novel, even if I didn't go through the government to get a copyright. Because I still created it. And if I can prove that I created it, I own the intellectual property. Um, I believe that the Wachowski brothers, uh, who did The Matrix, got in trouble for um, making that film. Uh, they were sued by a woman who had evidence of uh, the, the original story. She has all these notes and everything about how she came up with the story. She sued them saying they stole my idea. And I believe they ended up settling that claim, which means that they all right, so a couple scenarios they want us to go over. Scenario number one, a tourist takes a picture of a famous painting in a museum and decides to make some money by selling high quality prints of this photo on eBay. Is this lawful or unlawful? How many say this is totally okay, this is lawful, go ahead and sell away? How many say, nope, not cool? Not cool, okay? Um, then the answer is because somebody owns that intellectual property, okay? It's protected by a copyright law, okay? So you can't reproduce, you can't sell it, you can't make a profit off it, okay? Now, here's the question. What if it's like a wicked old painting from like 1437? So old, it's like wicked old, right? Anybody should be able to replicate that, right? Or no? Why not? Ideas? And it's not necessarily the descendants in the case like this either. It's whoever owns it. So if, if it's like uh, you know the Mona Lisa, who owns the Mona Lisa? Right? If you own the Mona Lisa, you have the rights to that painting <coughs> because Leonardo da Vinci, he doesn't really have an estate anymore. Right? He lived way before they were copyrighted into the property. But the Louvre owns the painting. Therefore, they are the ones that can license me. Does that make sense? So right, somebody always owns the intellectual uh, items. Not always, there are sometimes other things, but we'll talk about those. So copyright, the exclusive right to a piece of intellectual property and the right to authorize others to use the property. Okay. For example, the Happy Birthday song. Have we ever talked about the Happy Birthday song? Uh, right? Oh, we have, okay. So you have to pay Time Warner $50,000 if you want to put that in your TV show you're Crazy, right? And that song it was invented like it was written like back in like the 1870s or something like that. Okay. The people who wrote it, long since dead. But somebody else owns the rights too. They sold the rights to this other company, Time Warner. Well, whatever company became Time Warner, and now Time Warner, Warner owns it. You owe that Time Warner money. Okay. What's that? All right, scenario two. Your teacher is creating a multimedia presentation for your class and wants to use images that she downloaded from an online source to make her presentation more interesting. Is this lawful or unlawful? How many of you say, yes, it's totally okay for a teacher to put pictures in their PowerPoints? How many say, nope, not okay? How many of you think I should probably put all sorts of pictures on here to illustrate this point? Okay. Um, the idea here is that it is actually lawful for teachers to do this. <coughs> Technically, we're supposed to cite it, right? Every time you see a picture on a PowerPoint, you're supposed to see a citation. Of course, if you think about how many pictures you see on a PowerPoint, it would take us forever to make a PowerPoint, okay? Um, but it is technically lawful because we're using uh, the, the fair use. For educational purposes, it's okay to use some of this stuff, okay? So, I've got this definition for fair use. Look at this. Fair use, the doctrine of brief excerpts of copyrighted materials, so brief portions of it or small portions of something, may be under, circum under certain circumstances be quoted verbatim for purposes such as criticism, news reporting, 
teaching and research without the need for permission from or approval to the copyright holder. Okay? So criticism. The other day I watched this awesome video online. It was all about uh, one of the opening scenes from Jaws and how Steven Spielberg created this opening scene. Okay? So we've got this clip from this movie. Technically, you couldn't do that. Right? Because, um, and I can't really remember which uh, production company owns Jaws, but that production company owns Jaws. You can't put that on YouTube. Somebody else owns that. Okay? But this person could because they're using it as a form of criticism. They're breaking it down shot by shot by shot to explain what the filmmaker, or Steven Spielberg, did to create this scene. Okay? All right. Um, so another way you can do criticism. Uh, let's say you know you're like a um, I don't know a, a critic who looks at music and you you're, uh, you want to show this song and how this song is the most awesome song in the world. You can take an excerpt from the song, you can put it into whatever podcast or whatever you're making, and you can use that because you're doing it for criticism. You want to show an example that you can talk about as part of your discussion. Okay. Um, news reporting, hey, there's this movie coming out, it's horribly violent, don't take your kids to go see it because it's horrible, let me show you a little clip from it. Doesn't make any sense, but that's okay. Um, so you can use a clip for news reporting. Um, teaching and research, right? We do this all the time, right? We used to teach us up here, we show you movies, we, you know, we would photocopy things. There are rules for teachers on how to do this. So anytime you get like a handout, technically you're supposed to like shred them afterwards. So, yes, we can do that. Um, now, we do have, like, there are certain kind of gray, fuzzy gray areas associated with this. Uh, parody, for example, is one of those. You guys know what a parody is? What's parody? What's parody? Um, like the Excellent. So you're like Weird Al Yankovic, he always makes parodies. Like, uh, Mel Brooks with like space balls and men in tights. And, uh, those are all parodies, right? Um, you know, and, and so, really, though, like Mel Brooks and Weird Al Yankovic, they actually probably have to pay to make fun of some of these things. Okay? But you see on YouTube about these days, like all sorts of parodies of all sorts of things, right? Um, I know a student who likes to make like these little kind of like mix up videos where they'll take all of these different kinds of pieces of things and mix it together. Okay, and he sometimes he'll put it on YouTube, but then YouTube will kick it off. Okay, because it's breaking the fair use policy, and his argument is that it's not breaking it because technically fair use allows for parody, but sometimes the owners of those video pieces or whatever say no, parody is not under fair use. So that's a place where fair <coughs> use is kind of in like a fuzzy gray area, a place where YouTube is kind of not sure what to do about. It. So they tend to fall back on like, well, if that company, I don't know, Time Warner or whatever, doesn't want that out there on our site, we'll just take it off. I don't want to argue with that. It's a lot harder to argue with people with are really expensive lawyers than it is to argue with people who are trying to go Facebook. Right. Okay. So that's a fuzzy gray area, right? So now you may want to think to yourself, well, wait a second. Oh, actually, we'll ask, ask that question after the next time. Uh, uh, Okay, scenario three. A college student wants to listen to the latest album from her favorite on Earth. So she downloads it for free from a well-known file sharing website. She only downloaded it to listen to. She's not selling it. She's not publishing it. Is this lawful or unlawful? Let's see a show of hands. How many people say this is, this is totally okay, download it just to listen to it? How many people say, nope, not okay? How many people are really sure? Okay. Technically, this is illegal, right? Okay. This is unlawful. Okay. Unless you have permissions, you are not supposed to download it. And to get permissions, right, you have to pay for it. Right? You go out to iTunes and you, you pay. I don't, what are they charging for songs now? It's like the most random number. <coughs> oh, yeah. Right. So, so why not a dollar thirty? It's either that nine. Whatever. Anyway, you have to pay for it, right? Now, some artists will put stuff out there for free, right? Especially kind of like up and coming artists who are trying to get their name out, so they'll put stuff out there for free. Some artists, like YouTube, 
Uh, they will, um, you two will, you know, give away songs. Like a couple of years ago they were giving away, or was it last year they gave away, um, was it Invisible? Right after the, uh, the Super Bowl, right? And uh, don't they have like a full album on yeah, it's so now? Right, whether you want it or not, you get it. Right? I don't know, you should just be able to do that. It's there, right? So someone out there, some artists will kind of give it out there. However, it is unlawful for you to just grab it, take it, and run it, right? Even if it's only for your own purposes, right? When I was, um, I was actually just out of college when the whole like Napster thing started up, okay? It was kind of horribly painful to me because it was still a dial-up where it was like, I don't know, like what was it, like 56 kilobytes a second or something like that? The one where it was nowadays, like what do you have? 10 megabytes a second. Um, it was painfully slow. So I'd like set up, like try to download like three songs per night. And uh, I'd wake up in the morning at like two and a half and then download it over the course of the entire night. Um, but at the time, that was legal, right? People were downloading stuff off of LimeWire and Napster and all sorts of other file sharing places. You know, people would download thousands and thousands of hours of songs, right? And people would upload songs and share those songs. And then I think it was Metallica who came along and said, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. People can't just freely download our music. We worked hard on that music. We want to get paid for our music. So they sued Napster, and the courts filed in favor of Metallica. So Napster could no longer be a free place where you could download whatever song you wanted. Napster had to charge money, charge people money for these songs. That's when Apple came along with, aha, if we take iTunes and if we may sell songs through iTunes, that's a great place for people to get music. Artists need to make their money, and we'll make some money too. Right? Okay. So it is illegal to just download songs, which then poses the question, why are there so many YouTube downloads, loaders, right? MP3, uh, YouTube to MP3, right? Why do those exist? Why is it that those sites are not illegal and they haven't been taken down? <coughs> Any ideas? And they have an argument. They go back to this, right? <coughs> they say, no, these websites are totally legit because people may be able to use those things for fair use. Okay? So you can't download the latest Taylor Swift song right, for your own use. However, if you need it for a project, for school, for some educational purpose, you can download. Because under fair use, teaching, research, education is okay. Right? So that's their argument for why they can have this program. Right? Does that make sense? I want to create a video all about the, uh, the artistic talent of uh, I, I know, um, M. Night Shyamalan. I can find a clip on YouTube. I can pull that down. I can download that. I can then do some voiceovers and kind of play around with it or whatever. So that would be legit because it's crazy. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So piracy, uh, the definition of that is the unauthorized use or reproduction of another's work. Originally referred to any sort of theft on waterways, but now it's also referring to intellectual property. And so then the question is, do you think these laws and guidelines are fair? This is where I'm supposed to open this question up to the class and see if anybody has any thoughts or comments about these laws and guidelines. The other class like spent like an hour talking about this. <coughs> Yes, and DVDs and pirate those and whatever. 
So you'd see like people in like New York City or whatever, they were selling like stacks of DVDs or whatever for like dirt cheap because they just pirated them, right? Nowadays, it's a lot more complicated than the internet, right? It's so hard. And a lot of things are still being determined. A lot of people still don't know what to do with it. YouTube still doesn't know what to do with parody. Sometimes you see a, 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 an example of parody on there. Sometimes those parodies get taken off. It's hard to tell what is okay, what is not okay. <coughs> because these laws are still, the government, the, the, the Constitution, all these things are still trying to figure out what to do with the internet uh, and, and fair use with intellectual property. Right? There are some people out there who just release it all for free. There's some awesome websites out there where you can get really good free stuff. Um, a free play music, uh, or no, a free music archive, great place. All sorts of wonderful, great artists on there. They just want to put their name out there, right? You can download their stuff for free. It's all fair use stuff, so you can use it for whatever videos you're making, whatever movies you're making, whatever you want to do. You know, you can use it. You just got to attribute it to a bit, right? You're making a movie. You can't use U2 or Metallica because that's all copyrighted, but you can use. Um, archive.org has got like thousands and thousands of uh, live concerts that you can download. And some of them are really good quality. So, you know, you can get anything from like the, the Grateful Dead and Dire Straits, right? I have to walk in temporary bands. <coughs> you know, like, 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 like kind of the, the, um, there's a lot of bands that kind of go cruising around the colleges. Uh, you, when you get to college, you know what you're talking about. Um, a lot of those kind of bands that I really love, you can't get there. By the way, libraries are an amazing place where you can go and get all this stuff for free. Like, has anybody ever gone, gone to Baker Free and gotten a little slip? And on the bottom of the slip, it tells you how much you saved. I love looking at it towards the end of December. And there was one year I saved $3,000 going to Baker Free Library. Because we, I tend to get like stacks of kids' books to read with my boys, and they're expensive. It could be like 20 bucks a pop, right? $3,000, right? Now, remember, the library buys those, right? They buy the books, they buy the CDs, they buy their DVDs, so the artists and the producers and publishers still get a cut of it, but it, um, but we can borrow it free. Right? Well, it's not technically for free, our tax payments. Tax money goes to the library to pay for these things. Is there a hand back there somewhere? Like, well, you know what? Like Taylor Swift, she can make all of her money off of merchandising and you know, off of like uh, uh, you know, her shows that she goes, her concerts she puts on, right? But the trouble is, you don't make that much money off of the merchandise. You don't make that much money off of the concert tours. Because with the concert tours, you gotta pay for the buses and all the lights and the, the, the venues, you gotta pay all the roadies. You barely make any money off of that stuff. Right? You really make your money off. Of course, the question is, well, if you already have like millions and millions of dollars, why do you need millions and millions of dollars more? Right? That's the question. And that's a very personal question. Right? Less exceeding the power is responsible. Other thoughts? All right. Cool. So now you guys are ready to rock and roll for a And now you know everything there is to know about copyright laws and 